Thank you to Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, for sponsoring this episode of the Will Talk podcast. Their ready-to-eat meal kits are delivered straight to your door. And now that spring is here, you need those nutritious and convenient meals to energize us for the warmer and more active days. These ready-to-eat meals fill us up fast. It helps us save time, eat well, and it helps us to tackle everything on our to-do list. So go to factormeals.com slash will talk 50 and use the will talk 50 code to receive 50% off your first box. Again, that's factormeals.com slash will talk 50 and use code will talk 50 to get 50% off your first box. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Women in Leadership Talk podcast. We are super excited. We have Heather Dominic coming with us today from Manhattan. And Heather, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we're thrilled to have you. And we were just talking about the warm weather that I'm experiencing, but Heather is not, unfortunately. (laughs) So wherever our audience is located today, we hope you're having a beautiful sunny day and you're maximizing it no matter what weather you're getting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on that note, we want to thank you for tuning in and joining us on the Women in Leadership Talk podcast. We have an exciting conversation planned today with Heather just to talk about you know, highly sensitive strengths and, you know, getting more into why that's so important as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as a being. Um, But before we do that, I just want to give a little bit of context about Heather um, so that you, you know, have a sense of where she's come from and how she got to where she is. So Heather is the founder of A Course in Business Miracles, and she's had that business since 2010. She's taught thousands of highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders from around the globe how to release those lifelong limiting beliefs, overcoming fears, and developing new leadership um, skills in order to excel in business and life by doing things differently to create more impact and more income. She's an exceptional facilitator, teacher. She is known for creating a safe, sacred environment for true transformation, whether that's delivering training online or in person. She's also appeared on Lifetime Television and has been published in numerous books, including Stepping Stones to Success alongside uh, Deepak Chopra. So, well, that's pretty amazing. And I also saw in your uh, in your information that you had spent some time with Bette Midler when you mm-hmm. were a drama teacher. Yes, like, how cool true. is that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we're Super excited, Heather, to have you here today. And, you know, let's jump in because our audience, I know they want to hear more about what does it mean to be, you know, a highly sensitive leader. And just before we get there, though, maybe give some context to your background and and how and what led you down this path. Hmm. Yes, that's always the million dollar question of how to answer that as briefly as possible. So just because you mentioned my time with Bette Midler, so my first career was as a high school drama and English teacher. And um, I loved that work and also felt very confined by the traditional classroom, Mm. which led me to make the decision uh, regarding self-employment, which was actually in 2003. So as we're recording right now, I'm in my 20th year of being self-employed. And my first, you know, seven years of self-employment were, um, yeah, quite a trajectory of growth. I went through a lot of different iterations in my business. I also went through a lot of transformation regarding my own money mindset. And I, you know, pretty much started not, you know, with less than nothing. I was actually in the middle of a personal bankruptcy when I started my business. And I built that business up to seven figures within those seven years and had a very, very challenging time as part of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always like to say, like, I wish I could say that, you know, I crossed the the seven figure mark and, you know, everything was perfect. And, you know, fairy started doing my dishes and unicorns you know, carried me everywhere. And none of that happened. It was actually the exact opposite. I was pretty overwhelmed, not pretty. I was very overwhelmed, overworked, overexhausted. 
it was that time, uh, which looking back, I can definitely say it was a dark night of the soul that led me to understand that I am a highly sensitive person. And I had never even heard that phrase at that time. Once I understood that I was a highly sensitive person, I started putting pieces together and realizing like, oh, okay, this is why so much of being self-employed the way that I had been going about it was really working against my natural nervous system uh, behavior, if you will. So I started doing things very, very differently. And that led me to then coach and mentor other highly sensitives who also wanted to be self-employed, which has led us to, you know, where we are now, um, all these years later, and, um, you know, the, the founding and the delivering of the highly sensitive leadership training programs. Wow. So, there we go. <laughs> sounds like, wow, that's, I mean, it sounds like you've had, you know, quite the journey. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, very challenging uh, life moments to go through when you're facing bankruptcy, but also it's that, you know, the, I think the richness of that is that discovering of who you are, right. Mm -hmm. and, and to the path that it's led you to today. So, so maybe before we, you know, get too far down the road, let's talk a little bit about what is being a highly sensitive, you know, leader or person mean mm -hmm. and explain maybe how that can impact you, you know, as a, as an individual, but also as a leader. Absolutely. So highly sensitive person is uh, definitely a, a term not coined by me. It comes out of research from the mid 1990s. Um, there's a, a lot of research that was happening around that time. One woman in particular is best known for her research work, Dr. Elaine Aaron. And she is best known because she wrote the book, The Highly Sensitive Person. And it was my connection with Dr. Aaron um, about 2009, 2010, that was very pivotal for myself in understanding that I am a highly sensitive person. What that means in short is that your nervous system as a highly sensitive person is wired to take in stimulation at a much higher degree than someone who's not highly sensitive. So that stimulation can be anything from like sights to sound, to smells, to touch, to also energy, emotions, information. And maybe, you know, as folks are listening to that description, you can start to put the pieces together of like, oh, that would really impact how you process the world, right? And that is absolutely true. So again, from my personal experience, when I learned that I was highly sensitive, I started realizing like, oh, this is why so much that goes into being self-employed in terms of marketing and selling and operations isn't really energizing to me. I, you know, it's being self-employed is, um, you know, quite an endeavor, whether you're highly sensitive or not, but I would go to trainings and masterminds and I would look around at all these other people and they seemed like really excited about everything that they were doing. They were like inspired and motivated. And I knew that I was personally motivated about the service that I was delivering, but everything that needed to go into that was extremely taxing for me. Mm. So once I learned that I was a highly sensitive person, I started looking at being in business, being self-employed very differently and started literally doing things differently. So that was then the birth of what I have coined as the highly sensitive entrepreneur, which does require a different approach to marketing and selling and operations. Doesn't mean that you can't be successfully self-employed, but it does mean that you will raise the probability of your success if you're willing to work with your nervous system rather than against it. The leadership aspect of the work that I do really was born uh, at the pivotal time of the start of the pandemic, where I had already been getting the intuitive hit that the work was meant to move from HSE or highly sensitive entrepreneur 
only into a level of leadership, but I had really thought like, oh, that's probably going to be like five, 10 years down the road. And when the global pandemic of 2020 hit, I realized, oh, this, this is the call now. For those of us who are highly sensitive, the strengths, the gifts that we have to offer because of our sensitivity is really meant to be used in a leadership capacity, one, to ensure continued success for those of us who are highly sensitive, and to raise the level of positive impact that we're here to make. And so that was, that's really the highly sensitive person, the highly sensitive entrepreneur, and then the highly sensitive leader. Awesome. Awesome. So Heather, how would somebody know whether they are highly sensitive, right? Like, cause as you're describing, I'm listening and I'm looking, I'm listening for the clues, right? Um, because there are people in our lives that you go, oh yeah, maybe they are more highly sensitive. So just share some of that if you would. Yeah, for sure. Well, first, I think it's valuable to speak to one of the the very pivotal or important, I should say, imperative stats, the statistics regarding highly sensitives out of that original research from the 1990s, which is that there are 20 percent of us born into the world highly sensitive. So when you say like, oh, there's probably somebody around, I would say, yep, you're exactly right. One in five, (laughs) right? Of um, whoever is in your family, your friend circle, your colleagues, your team, staff, et cetera. And how you can know if you're a highly sensitive person. So Dr. Elaine Aaron, as part of her research, created an assessment that helps you to determine if you are a highly sensitive person. For myself, I built off of Dr. Aaron's assessment to create an assessment for those of us who are self-employed to be able to identify if you are a person who's highly sensitive, who is meant to be or called to be self-employed. Okay. So what might be some of those strengths or some of those attributes that would, uh, you you know, help you identify more easily, whether you're sensitive or not, without the quiz, even just normal things you would do. Totally. So for myself and my work, I've identified what I refer to as 12 top shadows for highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders and 12 top strengths for highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders. So to speak to the shadows first, the top shadow is overwhelm. And I always like to emphasize that when we're talking about highly sensitive overwhelm, we're not talking about overwhelm as in, you know, a quiz in say Marie Claire or Vogue magazine, right? This isn't about multitasking or a never ending to-do list. We all get that these days, whether we're highly sensitive or not. For a highly sensitive person, overwhelm is literally a physiological and biological experience. It's as if your system, uh, your nervous system is flooding. And if you are untrained in how to manage that, then it can really feel like almost like a short circuit or a shutdown. And so that might be when you are overstimulated. Um, and I can you know, give some examples or scenarios, but you start to like literally like you go like kind of foggy in your head, like you can't quite fully process thoughts right? Um, Or you're trying to take in information and it's like, it's just turning into like, you know, the teacher sound from the Charlie Brown cartoons, right? It's like a literal physical overwhelm. So that could be something from like, you know, you can take a stereotypical example, say like being at like a, a rock concert, right? Or even a loud restaurant and where others are like really like super excited and energized and stimulated in a very positive way to be in those environments. It can feel almost like it's an assault on the system for a person who's highly sensitive. So that's an example of a shadow on the opposite side from a strength perspective is that when we really learn how to work with our nervous system, when we're trained as highly sensitive, it gives us access to strengths that really work in our favor. 
one of those top strengths is definitely intuition, mm -hmm. which if you kind of just break it down and put the pieces together and you think like, oh, okay, being highly sensitive is like the nervous system is taking in stimulation, right? So you can think of like the nervous system, like a, like a radio antenna. And then you think like, oh, if I've learned how to work with my nervous system, so I don't go into that overwhelm. Oh, well, that would make sense then that the nervous system is heightened in terms of its availability to pick up on and take in intuition or intuitive senses. And then again, when you really are trained to work with your nervous system, then you can utilize the intuition to really work in your favor um, on behalf of say business decisions, right? Or on behalf of um, leadership skills. So those are just, you know, the top two on either side and, and some examples to go along with it. Are you too busy to cook this spring? Factors got you covered. You skip those grocery store lineups, the chopping, the prepping, and even the cleanup. All of their products are served fresh and ready in just two minutes. Now think about that. You can't even get restaurant delivery that fast. So you just heat it and serve. They also offer many options such as Calorie Smart, and those come in with around or less than 550 calories. You get to choose from keto, vegan, vegetarian, and protein plus. They've prepared over 34 chef prepared and dietitian approved weekly options for you. And if you like snacks, because who doesn't, Factor offers an assortment of over 45 add-ons. This includes breakfast, egg bites, smoothies, and so many more options. But listen, the other thing when choosing Factor, you're making a sustainable choice. 100% of delivery emissions are offset to your door. And they source 100% of renew renewable energy for production sites and their offices. Plus, they feature sustainably sourced seafood for all of their meals. So listen, it's time to head on over to factormeals.com slash willtalk50 and you're going to use We'll talk 50 is your code to get 50% off your first box. Now, I want to repeat that again. That's factormails.com slash we'll talk 50, and you're going to get 50% off your first box. Yeah, no, that's great. And as you were saying that, you know, that made me start thinking about, um, so what would be the difference between somebody who's more of an empath versus somebody who's highly sensitive? Yes, for sure. So the way that I'd like to speak about that is if you kind of think of it like a spectrum, right? So first of all, we're we're all sensitive, whether we're highly sensitive or not. Someone who's not highly sensitive, it's not like they're dead to the, to the world, right? So it's like you can just think of it like a spectrum. And an empath would be further beyond a highly sensitive person. So where like, say, even a highly sensitive person might experience that overstimulation and overwhelm for an empath, it might be like, not only is their system flooded, but like a tsunami is, you know, crashing their system. So that can be, again, that spectrum can be a helpful way to think about it. Right. No, that's really good. Because I've always said, like, you know, I'll use my daughter as an example. I've always said, I think she has a lot of empath tendencies. Mm -hmm. um, and what you were just talking about with the strength of, of intuition, she's very, she's young and has incredible intuition already at such a young age. And of course, I'm always like, trying to help her tune into that and really listen to it. Because that's such a gift to have, mm -hmm. but when right. you were describing the overwhelm. I was like, oh my gosh, you're talking about my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is, you know, test or things that just, right. you know, that all just makes her go foggy. She loses her thought and she's such a great student and so smart, but it just really does overwhelm her. Yes. It's a great example, right? Because what you're really talking about is environmental yeah. stimulation, right? And so if you apply that then to say like, again, being an entrepreneur, you know, or a leader, then unlike a student where you're kind of subjected, right? To like what the educational environment is, but as a person who's chosen to be self-employed or is in a leadership position, you have a bit more agency mm -hmm. in terms of how you can have the environment set to support support you in being more in that intuitive space versus that overwhelmed space. Okay. That's a great example, actually. So 
can you share maybe an example of how you would how you would prepare yourself in that environment? Um, doesn't have oh, to be sorry. I mean, like the school environment? No, no, no. In work or you know leadership environment, because when you just describe that, sometimes you can use that to your advantage to right. sort of stage the environment. Yeah, for sure. So you know, it's the 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 example that comes to mind is somewhat environmental, but that's really about like setting your schedule, mm -hmm. right? So um, that's one of the privileges, say, of being self-employed, is that you can really set a schedule so it works for you. The irony is that a lot of highly sensitives are attracted to self-employment because they think like, oh my gosh, this is great. I can like, you know, journal all day and like, you know, <laughs> everything will just be so much easier. And of course, that's, you know, more than, than what one might first consider is needed in order to be able to be successfully self-employed. Yet you can, for example, take into consideration your, your natural circadian rhythm, mm. right? So when you step out of say a traditional structure like school or corporate, then suddenly it's not like, oh, I'm not gonna not do anything all day, but I can learn when I am at my most productive okay. and what helps me to be my most productive. I'm going to have to go through a process of detangling a lot of socialized training about what being productive means or looks like or what is a quote unquote success oriented schedule. As you work through that, then you can begin to arrange your schedule, your days, your weeks to cater to how and when you are your most creative, which is another one of our strengths is highly sensitive, and then utilizing that in order to be able to literally create, say, effective marketing, right? To then have effective selling conversations, set up your operations to work more with that ideal schedule based on your circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example, again, not necessarily only tactile environmental, but our schedule is part of our environment for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And so what happens typically, what happens when you don't have control over that environment? Because I think that's a, you've brought up such a, a really great point that you know, you find ways to work around it when you have control over it. Mm -hmm. And and for somebody who's highly sensitive, then what happens to you, especially in business, right? Because we have so much complexity and so much unknown. Mm -hmm. How do you set yourself up for success in mm -hmm. those, you know, those types of environments? For sure. So this is a lot of what we teach in the highly sensitive leadership training programs when it comes to to learning how to work with your nervous system optimally. And a big part of that is in those aspects, you know, of being self-employed or just life in general that are not predictable, mm -hmm. right? So when we're talking about like even working optimally with a schedule, say as a highly sensitive, we're not talking about locking down into control or another highly sensitive shadow, which is overprotection. Right. Mm -hmm. That would be okay. going to the other extreme where it's just like, you know, I have to lock down my schedule. And if I'm like one minute out of this, then, you know, forget it. Everything is just gone to heck. And that would again be overprotection versus, okay, like I understand why or when I work at my best. And I have am also working with my nervous system to be able to adjust and uh, flow with flexibility and fluidity as needed when needed, and to be able to respond to change. Mm -hmm. So for example, there is an entire orientation training um, as part of the leadership training programs, which is all about the highly sensitive reactions to change. 
So as you start to learn like, oh, this is what my nervous system does when I am stressed. This is what my nervous system does when a plan does change. This is what my nervous system does when I feel pressure. Then you can start to proactively be prepared for that versus when a highly sensitive is untrained typically the experience that they feel like they're having. And I definitely remember this is how it was for me before I understood that I was highly sensitive is it just feels like the world is happening to you mm-hmm. like all the time. It just yeah, feels like, imagine. you mm-hmm. know, it's just like a constant versus like, Oh, okay. I understand more now, like who I am, how my system operates. And I am going to set myself up to, you know, prepare to be able to be, again, my most creative, my most productive. So that's really the key um, versus like, say like, oh, here are just kind of some hacks to try to like make it through the day when you can't control your environment. But more so it's about like, okay, what do I understand about myself and how do I want to enter into this experience in a way where I feel best prepared, even if and when change occurs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I love what you're just saying there. I mean, it's it's your way of being right and and really being proactive about how you want to be in the world. Yes. Any and and I'm sure that this came out in uh, uh, the book that you were talking about earlier what causes this? Like what causes somebody to be highly sensitive compared to somebody who's not sensitive? Yeah, I know. It's such a great question. Mm -hmm. It's such a great question because, you know, from my own experience, as well as like just literally thousands of others that I've mentored, it's like, we all want to point the finger somewhere. Right. And yet the research literally shows it's luck of the draw. <laughs> you know? okay. like there's 20% of us. It's like, this is how you're born into the world. And what's fascinating about the research too, is it's not just human beings. The research has shown it's like other animal, um, what would you call that animal species, I guess, mm-hmm. who also there are percentages. So I don't know enough about that to really speak to it, but I know that I always just found that aspect fascinating, right? Is that there's 20% of us who, again, this is how you're born into the world. So I always like to say, your parents didn't do it to you. You know, you didn't pick it up on the playground and it's not because of that weird drink that you had at that party in college. (laughs) It's like literally like this is who you are. And so then it can sometimes lead to the question of like, oh, the fates, the fates, right? Like, why, why, why me? And yet beautifully in Dr. Aaron's research is she speaks to how those of us who are highly sensitive, like we have a role to play in this world. Like we are brought here to be the royal advisors to those who are not highly sensitive. So we often as highly sensitives, like we're the ones who we make excellent teachers. We make excellent coaches. We make excellent lawyers, the good ones, right? Like we make excellent researchers, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really about more so owning you know, who you are and how you've been brought into the world and why you've been brought into the world and then setting yourself up so that you're utilizing that. It can be confusing because if you just look at the percentages, 20 versus 80, and you don't understand either that you're highly sensitive or you don't understand yet how to work with yourself optimally, it can feel like the world is against you, right? Like the world is designed for everyone else, but me. Yeah, for you. Yeah. Right? And so it's just about like, okay, then, you know, it's part of doing the work so that, um, again, you're owning and claiming more of who you are and, and the gift of why you've been brought here. Yeah. Well, and, and even what you just said there about positioning it in your mind as a gift versus a curse, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yes. I mean, that in itself is, is a completely different paradigm. And when you can see it as a gift, like, and think about what the impact is. And so just out of curiosity, you know, when you think about your own impact in the world, why, why is that so important to you to, to be able to share your gifts and, you know, support others in, in becoming more sensitive? 
Yeah, for sure. Well, I think for, again, you know, just my personal experience and those that I've mentored and coached over the years. So I would say more from like a, a practical research perspective is strengths that we possess as highly sensitives is we are deep thinkers. That's a strength. We're deep feelers. That's a strength. We are deep listeners. That's a strength. And we also possess a deep belief in justice. That's one of our mm. strengths as highly sensitive. All to say that, again, from my own personal experience, as well as those that I've witnessed, we as highly sensitives tend to be very driven by a sense of purpose. So whatever that might be, for myself, I know because of my personal experience and so clearly having such a, a different result before I understood that I was highly sensitive and then when I understood that I was highly sensitive and how much I suffered and struggled not knowing and how much easier and more fulfilling and more of a sense of purpose I experienced once I learned that I was highly sensitive and more so how to work with myself as a highly sensitive, I do feel called to be able to share that with others so that they can not have that sense of suffering that comes when you don't understand how to work with your nervous system, that sense of feeling not enough or also not belonging that comes with not understanding oneself as a highly sensitive. And then more than that, the impact that is very important to me is I believe deeply in the impact that we are meant to make in the world for those of us who are highly sensitive. And I also am very clear, like the world isn't going to roll out the red carpet for the highly sensitives. So if we are to support the world and tipping more towards the light than the darkness, for lack of a better way of saying it, during this imperative time, this tumultuous time that we're all living through, we have to be empowered as highly sensitives so that there is then that ripple effect and we have the opportunity for the world to tilt towards that betterment. That's what really drives me. That's that's the passion behind my personal mission. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And and to think about how you how you can touch other people's lives and help them, you know, find their own path, whatever that path might be, whether it's mm -hmm. in leadership, business, entrepreneur, individually, helping them to find their way mm -hmm. um, to have their own impact on the world. Because I mean, my belief is that each of us have our own special, unique, uniqueness, our own gifts that we, you know, we owe it to ourselves and to the world to share. So I love that, you know, you've got this purpose and this mission of really elevating highly sensitive individuals and helping them to navigate that. Because if on the flip side of that, I can see how that could be very draining and very um, confusing at times. Uh, and that's actually just because uh, I'm cognizant of our time together here today, you know, just as a, you know, before you really understood what was happening to you, you know, what did you think was going on? Oh, gosh. Well, I, <laughs> I would say the blanket statement or question that I would ask all the time was what is wrong with me? Mm. And I definitely since then heard that from so many others and it feels very secretive and it feels very shameful. Mm -hmm. And then that tends to drive uh, the highly sensitive tendency towards those shadows, right? And then also what I've identified in my work as coping mechanisms. And so in very short, the coping mechanisms are you're either a pusher, a hider, or a combo platter. For myself, I'm definitely a recovering pusher. So my, my experience consistently was what is wrong with me? 
And what do I have to do to keep anyone else from finding out? And so it was this constant drive and then state of high anxiety and exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very tough place to be. And, and luckily and, and gratefully you, you were able to, you know, find that, that seed that helped you to navigate to where you are today. So that's wonderful. So I, I am cognizant of our time here, Heather, and, and just out of curiosity, what might be one thing that you would say to our audience today that they can walk away with and either implement or share with someone in their life that might be highly sensitive? I would say, you know, first and foremost is just a deeper understanding of what it means to be highly sensitive. And as you said earlier yourself, that it doesn't mean that's a weakness or that there is something wrong with you. And the same goes for others in your life. If you're not highly sensitive, but people in your life are, it doesn't mean that they are weaker or less than, um, and that there's a value to those in our lives who are highly sensitive, whether it's yourself or as I shared earlier, someone in your family, your friend circle, right? Your colleagues, definitely staff and team. You know, I would say the invitation is, you know, find out more um, so that you can best be supported for yourself and or support those who are in your life and they're highly sensitive. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great, uh, that's a great way for us to sort of wrap up today's conversation. Um, And, you know, again, when we, to Heather's point, when we have someone in our life that may potentially be highly sensitive, help them recognize the power that they have, Um, really help them step into owning that in whatever way is most comfortable for them. And if you have questions, um, you know, certainly you can reach out to Heather, you can reach out to me, I can share those questions with Heather. Uh, We'd be happy to have more dialogue around this and we'd be curious, like, who do you know in your life that is highly sensitive? And, you know, I know everyone has, you know, they have the choice of listening to any podcast out there. And we're super grateful that you choose Women in Leadership Talk. And Heather, I want to thank you for joining us today. This has been really terrific and insightful. Um, I'm going to be now paying more attention (laughs) to everyone I encounter to understand okay, where are they on the spectrum? Are they highly sensitive? Are they just a little bit sensitive? Are they not sensitive at all? Right, (laughs) So this this has been a great education uh, for sure. So thank you for that. And with our audience listening, you know, again, like I said, I'm super grateful that you choose Women in Leadership Talk. If you're curious about your own leadership, you can certainly go on our website at Will Empowered, and that's one L, and take our leadership quiz, which will give you some insight as to how you show up as a leader uh, with regards to your confidence and your communication. And so I'd love to hear how you make out with that leadership quiz. And again, if you have questions for Heather, please feel free to reach out to her on uh, her social media. Heather, do you want to share like where people can reach you? I would say the best place is www.businessmiracles.com. And you'll find everything there and hopefully some resources that will be supportive. Awesome. Awesome. So that's businessmiracles.com. So thank you, everyone. We look forward to seeing you at our next Women in Leadership Talk podcast. Have a great day and be well.